Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zade here with another episode of Zade's Experience. Today, we're going to be talking about routine. For me, this past year has been specifically hard and not just because of the unmentionable things that have happened, um, but just it's it's been a lot more complicated than other years for me just because of some of the changes that 2020 brought for me and plus new challenges that I had to face. So if you have had some trouble getting back into a routine, definitely stick around for this video guys. And I'll show you what I did in order to get back into my routine. So thanks for joining me again, guys, in another episode of Sage Experience. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. As far as getting into a routine, I've never really had an issue, but 2020 proof to be quite the thing. It was <laughs> quite unique in many, many different ways. So in my particular case, I have never had an issue getting into a routine. I'm very much a creature of habit. So there's always been three constants in my life. In order for me to function properly, it's always gotta be three constants. Food, food is number one. For me, food, there's a, it's, it's, it's always a constant, guys. My bodybuilder routine, my or my bodybuilder-esque kind of meals, you know, six to seven meals a day. My more paleo-ish approach that I tried at one point, a little bit more of a vegetarian approach that I tried for a little while, that didn't last very long. And as of very recently, my carnivore approach that was just all out carnivore and now a carnivore-ish diet that I kind of have going on. So food has always been a constant no matter what. Second thing that's always been a constant, work. I've always had some kind of work. I've actually worked ever since I was like 11, 12. And before I used to sell popsicles when I was a little kid, I would used to sell popsicles out on the street. Uh, I used to make raspados, if any of you know what that is. Um, it's basically like shaved ice that you can buy in a little cart in Mexico. Um, this guy gave me like <laughs> employment for like a week. <laughs> uh, again, child labor laws in Mexico, non-existent. My trombone has always been a source of income for me, or at one point it started to become a source of income. I believe ever since I was 18, my trombone started to become a source of income. School, while I was at school, I, I had three different jobs, guys. I worked at uh, Adidas, Vans, like the shoes, like the, the the brands. I used to work at those retail stores. Uh, I used to set up the crew, uh, the the stages for for other people that were going to perform. So I worked through the music department at the school that I was attending at the uh, at the time, and that was a, a big thing for me to help me support myself and pay my apartment and pay my everything basically so I've always had some kind of employment there's always been a constant employment there was there has never been a point in my life where I haven't been employed ever since I was I believe 13 14 but there has always been a job there's always been that that constant as well that's number two some kind of a job and number three would be my third constant that's movement there's always been some kind of a movement whether it be exercising whether it be crossfit whether it be weightlifting bodybuilding whatever it may be there's always been some kind of movement and so as 2020 hit obviously it became a little bit harder to do some of these the first thing that went was my job and once that went away for a short period of time that kind of threw off my entire day like the balance of my entire day and soon it started to throw off my workouts and then it started to throw out my nutrition a little bit i've been there's there's been such a big time frame that has always been occupied by work throughout the entire day then when it wasn't there it was so noticeable it was so just wrong for my body to be working out in the morning um or like around 11 o'clock 10 o'clock midday uh, versus being at work you know and as far as nutrition goes i was able to kind of lock down a little bit more on my nutrition again it just th there was something off about it, it again you uh, i'm very set on my ways as far as routine so this just threw me off and it was really hard for me to get back on it or into some kind of routine ever since 2020 like since the whole pandemic blow that went across the entire world actually so that that was really really tough for me to get back on it and with my unemployment um or furloughed for a quick minute you know that that also kind of 
threw me off. And then when I got back into work after the furlough was over, that was even even more odd because now I had developed kind of a routine around the system that I had before. But now when I went back into my regular routine, it threw that one off. And now my new routine was back to its old routine with the changes that were happening in the world, such as wearing masks, going into the gym and having like a, a you know, a time frame that you were allotted to, that kind of a situation. So that really, I guess, pushed me try new things, look somewhere else. Like my routines just didn't feel normal anymore. It didn't, it didn't feel doable. So this was the, the, uh, the major issue for me, just not being able to get back into a routine in 2020 as many of my friends also explained to me that they had this exact same similar issue that, that they just couldn't, you know, that their lives were, was functioning and nothing was going horribly bad, but they just couldn't get back on it. There wasn't a specific rhythm until 2021 started to hit. So come end of 2020, I started, realize, I started kind of analyzing a little bit more why have I not been able to get back into rhythm? Why have I not been able to do this? This is such an important thing to me and it should be so second nature. And so I started to analyze everything. And when I did, it kind of revealed a portion of why I wasn't able to get back into a routine. And there were several things that I found. Number one reason was I had changed. I had changed dramatically in in that year, that 2020, when the whole pandemic hit, I had changed massively and I just hadn't noticed, you know? I had my gynecomastia surgery in November, December-ish. That whole time period was a, a time for me to analyze who I was, how I changed, how I thought about myself, what Zay thought about Zay versus um, what people thought about Zay. It's, it's just a completely different thing. My job had my job description have changed. My my current work like things changed for me so rapidly. I, I I ascended in positions, and so there was a lot more responsibilities that were taking place, which was another one of the reasons why I wasn't able to do YouTube as well. And three, YouTube just didn't feel right because I felt almost I felt I wasn't delivering the content that you guys wanted, which was more along the lines of the carnivore diet and a lot of people actually look at my videos for my beard cotton which i like but some people don't so that that was another thing i didn't feel like i could bring that cotton in a genuine way so that was one of the reasons why i also didn't make a lot of the, of the content that i usually make so that was number three and number four was was actually one of the biggest ones which was my interests had changed i I love running guys. I really do like running. I really do like CrossFit. I really do like exercising, but if something had changed in me, like the fuel that usually fueled me <laughs> wasn't doing it for me anymore. For a very prolonged period of time, uh, I think I became maybe not comfortable, but I felt like I was okay. I was stable for a very long period of time. And so I was able to bring you guys these con this cotton and I had a schedule, I had a, a solid monetary base. I, I didn't, I don't have millions, I still don't. Um, I never had them, but I definitely felt secure as, as far as what I could buy, the average day needs, everything, you know, all that stuff. I, I felt pretty solid, but come 2020, um, it felt like everything was up in the air and I just, I felt different. I felt angsty. I felt like I didn't trust myself to go ahead and deliver those things, you know, to maybe put food on the table, maybe pay rent, pay my car, be able to pay the subscriptions to, for bringing you guys music and stuff like that. You know, like I noticed that I, it was, it just wasn't cutting it for me this year. Like something was amiss, even though I was trying to do videos and I did do content for you guys. Actually, I just, I never put it together. Like it didn't feel genuine in, in, in my view. Having said that, I think the cure to all this was me realizing what I, what was missing to me, what, like taking a step back and analyzing what I had become, what had changed in me and what what was the fuel that was fueling me before and to find out what was the new fuel that's fueling me as of today, as of right now. 
and I started finding some interesting stuff. So come around, come November, December, I started to try out new things. So what did I do? One of the things that I started to try out was I started noticing where I felt a lot more comfortable or where my energy came from. Let me explain this. As a, a little kid, I went through many, many phases, especially with the gynecomastia video. You guys probably saw that. And if you haven't saw, seen that, I would highly suggest that you watch that. So I'll leave a link to that up here. I'll leave a card. So go ahead and check it out. I'll also leave it at the end of the video. As a kid, I was fueled very much by anger, by rage. I didn't understand what was happening to me. So whenever I lifted weights or did anything, or I was in my own spare time, or I walked or I jumped rope, whatever it was, I would be fueled by that rage, that intensity of me saying, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna become something bigger. I'm not gonna be that coward kid anymore. I'm gonna show people that I can be so much more and I'm gonna show myself that I am not what they say, you know? I used to care a lot about what they say, the people, which was something wrong. And it's it still to think about it that way, I think is, is a little wrong, but got over that. And then there was a transitional period where I, where I started to get fueled but what, by what my professors told me, what my teachers, the mentors that I had throughout the years. This was throughout my 18, throughout like 24-ish years old. I started to see what my mentors were giving me and I fed off of that in conjunction with my inner fire, fuel, desire for improving or getting better at whatever it was. And then from my 20, from when I, from when I was 25 to present, there was a pretty good time where I was fueled by me feeling a lot more comfortable in my skin, starting to know who I was. I started to gain confidence throughout my work. I am a lot better than what I think I am. And so that gave me a lot of confidence in life and it allowed me to go out and do the things that I wanted to do with a little bit more of a, I guess less anger in my energy. In these past couple of months, I've noticed that my fuel is now coming from several places. Before it was either from me being enraged, me or my mentors, and or me being comfortable, a little bit more comfortable with in my own skin. And then it all, this past year, it's all become a, a conglomerate of all those things. It's just been just everything put together. The rage that I've had as a kid, um, you know, a lot more of the confidence that I now have. Um, this gynecomastia surgery brought a lot more of my, my, my inner confidence to the table and how I've grown as a person over the years and, and knowing that I can do a lot of things that I, I guess I thought I was never gonna be able to do due to the a lack of confidence. But now that comfort that came from, that, that energy that came from comfort, is just not present anymore. Like there, right now it's, I'm not saying that it's a comfortable time in my life. It's not an uncomfortable time in my life, but it's definitely a little shaky, a little wobbly. So right now, whenever I do anything, there's almost like a push, a need to, 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 to progress. There is no option to fail in, in my eyes. So that has become a very much a thing of the present right now. And that's something that I had when I was in music school. And it's very hard to just call upon it um, whenever you want to, but now it feels like it's just coming out more in, in a more natural form. And so I started to take up something that I wanted to do for a very, very long time, which was Muay Thai. I wanted to to learn this uh, martial art for a very, very long time. My dad was actually a martial artist. He, uh, he was a martial artist for several years. He didn't get to ever to a black belt, but I think he stopped at brown belt um, and he competed. Uh, he won several medals in Las Vegas and stuff like that, but he never wanted to show me how to become like a martial artist or to get into a sport such as that because he was afraid. He's seen what happens to some people. And so he never wanted to teach me any of that. Um, but I had been wanting to do that ever since I was 20, but never had the money, that kind of a situation. And besides, the times that I did have money, I was very worried if I, you know, maybe got injured, my right arm got injured. Remember as a trombone player, we use our, our right arm to go ahead and manipulate the slide of the horn. I injured my right shoulder or even my face. You know, if I got a fat lip, I wasn't gonna be able to play my instrument, hence be able to make money, 
or <laughs> put food on my table, you know? So I was I always held back. There was something always holding me back. So I started doing Muay Thai in a local gym called the boxing club and i've really much liked it ever since it's controlled that rage <laughs> that now fuels me once again that is more tame it's a it's a weird it's really hard to describe but it's it's a really cool inner fire that has kind of been brought up once again but it's it's bigger it's so i almost like to describe it as a flame before it was very it burned very hot I, you could say when i was a lot younger because there was a lot of rage but it was uncontrolled now it's now I can kind of turn it on almost at will. It's just that inner fire. You guys got to find that inner fire. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people know exactly what I'm talking about. But I found that in, in doing different things. I found it in Muay Thai. I found that that was able to help me calm down and think more level-headed, which is something that I needed with, with all these changing things um, currently happening in the world in my, in, and in my life as well. So I started to try out Muay Thai. And uh, yeah, that, that has been something that I've been practicing up until right now, 2021. Second thing that I started doing was I started keeping contact with my family a lot more. That was something that I definitely needed. Uh, I, I had not had the biggest relationship with my mom or my dad for a prolonged period of time and some of my brothers. So I started to kind of get closer to them. I started to communicate a lot more with, with my friends and I started to do more things, you know? Um, with them and I know 2020 was like the year where that was actually frowned upon you couldn't go see your family in case you had something you know and then you bring it to them and all that the whole <sighs> that situation um, you guys have heard probably enough of it by now but I, I started to it, it was the perfect time for me to say if not now when you know so I started to get closer to my family, started to pay way, way more attention to that. And uh, it's paid some dividends, I can tell you that. Um, I feel a lot happier with where I am. Um, a, lot, a lot of people have reassured me of what I have reassured to myself, um, saying, dude, you're in a good situation, you're in a good spot, just keep at it, you know? And sometimes you gotta hear that. Sometimes you know that, but sometimes hearing it from somebody else just, it makes all the difference. And who else to hear from from people that actually love you by telling you the truth you know they'll tell you hey you know this and this and this is good but we still need to work on this that's the kind of people you want by your side so i made sure to keep tabs with all those people this year um in the past year 2021 and late 2020 and that was something that definitely definitely helped me and is helping me out till this day third work changed since work changed i I started to change along with it. I, I noticed that my role at work changed quite a bit and it became a little bit more of a leader role. Well, a lot more of a leader role. And that pushed me to try out new things to definitely find out what my leadership capabilities were, improve upon them, and then push them to their limits. And so I've been, I've been listening to a bunch of books that, that have helped me out. And if you guys haven't, I would highly, highly suggest that you get on some books. One of them is um, by Jocko Wilkins. Um, hopefully I said his last name right. But Jocko, Jocko's book is pretty awesome. There's several books by Jocko. I, uh, I like the way that he teaches leadership. There's also some books by Jordan Peterson that you probably have heard. And there's also some other stuff that, that I've read that I'll leave down in the description below. But that has been invaluable in me trying to learn and manage people, which was a skill that, I, that I'm still improving upon and has definitely turned me into a better person, not just in leadership, but also confidence wise it has teach it has taught me to know my place and what i'm capable of doing and finally a uh, nutritional revamp number four should be that a nutritional revamp as you guys know uh, i'm kind of been known as the carnivore guy for a very long time and don't get me wrong i still do carnivore all the way guys like i like my carnivore diet but i've been able to analyze and revamp this diet into a more permanent lifestyle, you know? So those were the biggest things that I noticed 
uh, had had changed and that I needed to revamp, you know? It's been a really weird and awkward journey, but the only thing that has helped me to solidify all that has been consistency at the end of the day. I've been very, very consistent with these things and it's, it's finally starting to feel like a routine. Now I have something going on. Video creation has started to become part of everything, you know, me coming up with some topics. Like now I feel like I'm coming from a more genuine place and I actually feel a lot happier creating these videos for you guys because it feels like this is a lot more this is something i want to talk about this is something I, i'm actually i'm happy to talk to you and convey to you guys some of the stuff some of the books that i recommended today my muay thai videos that are coming up i'm, I'm going to be including a little bit more of my training that i do there some of my running i've always liked doing running but i started picking it up as a very recently once again my nutrition is coming back in a little bit of a different way and how that's feeling my new workouts you know work all that stuff so now i feel like i'm coming from a different place with more energy and again with another fire that's fueling my desire to continue these videos but in any case guys thanks for joining me in another episode of sage experience please go ahead comment like and subscribe you know the whole shenanigans definitely push that like button because it definitely helps the youtube algorithm push this video out to you guys if this video was helpful in any way please leave a comment down there let me know what it helped you guys with i would really much like to hear if you guys have a comment in regards to something like this you know what did you guys do in order to maybe get back in a routine if you had a hard time getting back into a routine just like I did. Remember, if like it, it, I know it sounds super cliche, but if I can do it, you guys can do it. It's just a matter of maybe trying out new things, maybe discovering where your fuel's coming from. Maybe you have changed as well and you need to accept that maybe you need to go ahead and dig deeper and maybe revisit some stuff that you haven't been wanting to revisit, maybe some stuff that you've been putting off to the side. So it's just, it, it's, it's a process of discovery guys. And I think everybody can definitely benefit from taking a step back or a couple of steps back and analyzing what's going on at the moment, making an educated decision as to what's gonna be the next path, stick to it for a little while and see what it brings. But in any case, guys, I'll, be, I'll keep on bringing you more content and you'll be hearing a lot more from me in the next couple of weeks. So Zade, out. Peace.